The first thing to notice in this arrangement is that there are two contact points between the rope and the man chair system. And so, for example, the rope is contacting that system here, but it's also contacting that system here. So those two contact points will become important because as the man pulls down on the rope, the rope is pulling up on the man and chair system. So we're going to have an upward tension force pulling up on that system right here, but because of the two contact points, there is a second tension force here that is also pulling up on the system. So when we draw a free body diagram of the system, we have to make sure that we put two tension forces pulling up at those two contact points. Now, of course, we also have a third force, the gravitational force, which we can symbolize as mg. So this would be the free body diagram that we can use for parts A and B of the question. Now, we know from Newton's second law that the sum of those forces would equal the mass times the acceleration. Let us arbitrarily call the upward direction positive and the downward direction negative. So then we would have ten tension plus tension minus the gravitational force would equal ma. Of course, we can simplify that to just 2t minus mg is equal to ma. And in part A, we're looking for that tension. We're looking for how hard or with what magnitude of force the man must pull. But remember, he's pulling with a force of tension. So we have to find that tension in this question. We can do so by adding mg to both sides of the equation, canceling it on the left-hand side. So now we have 2t is equal to ma plus mg, and then we will divide both sides of the equation by 2. And this shows us what the tension will equal. And in part A, if we go back up and look there, it says that the system is traveling with a constant velocity. So, of course, that means in part A, the acceleration is going to be zero. We also have the mass given to us of 95 kilograms. G, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's plug in the known data. So when we punch this into our calculator and recognize that this term right here is zero, we will see that the tension in the rope, which is the same as the force magnitude that the man is pulling on the rope with, is about 466 newtons. So this is the correct answer to part A. In part B, we are given a different value for the acceleration. We are told in part B that there is an upward acceleration of positive 1.3 meters per second squared. So the good news here is that we can use this exact same equation and we can actually just plug in a different acceleration value. This time, instead of zero for the acceleration, we'll plug in that given value of 1.3. And when we plug that into our calculator, we will see that the tension force is about 527 newtons. So once again, that is the force magnitude with which the man is pulling on the rope. Now we go up to parts C and D, and things change a little here. It says, if the rope on the right extends to the ground and is pulled by a coworker, with what force magnitude must the coworker pull for the man to rise? Again, with constant velocity, and then later again with upward acceleration of 1.3 meters per second squared. So let's just redraw the picture and get a feel for what's going on here. So here's a rough sketch of what's going on. We have the coworker pulling down on the rope. And then if we kind of follow the rope along to the system of the man and the chair, we can see that this time there is only one contact point between the man in the chair and the rope. So what we're going to do is sort of think about the free body diagram that would exist in this case. We're looking at that system right there, that point, which again is the man sitting in the chair. And we have the downward gravitational force again, mg. But again, because there's only one contact point, this time there's only going to be one tension pulling on the man chair system. So now we can apply Newton's second law again. We'll this time say that the tension minus mg is equal to ma. So again, notice it's just one tension rather than two tensions. We want to solve for that tension. We would add the mg over to the other side, and we have ma plus mg. Let's go ahead and for part c, remember that the man in the chair is traveling at constant velocity, so that means the acceleration is zero. So we'll have the mass, 95 kilograms times zero, and then plus 95 kilograms times 9.8. Let's go ahead and punch this into our calculators. And we get exactly 931 newtons. So this is the correct answer to part C. And now we go to part D. And the acceleration this time was that positive 1.3. So we'll have 95 kilograms times positive 1.3 meters per second squared plus 95 kilograms times the 9.8 meters per second squared. 
and we get a tension in this case of approximately 1055 newtons. So that is the correct answer to part D. Now we go back up here and we can see the question asking us what is the magnitude of the force on the ceiling from the pulley system in part A, in part B, part C, and part D. The lettering there was a little confusing, wasn't it? So let's take a look at what's going on over at the ceiling. So here is kind of a zoomed in portion of the original picture. We see what's going on at the ceiling. We have the tension in two sides of the rope pulling down on the pulley. So this would be T and this would also be T. And so what we can see is that there is a total force, we can kind of call it the sum of force, of 2T pulling down on the pulley. And so if 2T is pulling down on the pulley, then the pulley is also pulling down on the ceiling with that same force. So in other words, at the ceiling, we have a total force of 2T pulling down on it. And so this will make the rest of the question pretty easy to solve because for the remaining part of the question, all we have to do is take all of the tensions that we previously determined and then just double them. That will give us the amount of force pulling down on the ceiling. So let's go ahead and set this up in a nice and efficient manner. So we've set up kind of like a chart here. We have parts E through H, which we're trying to answer right now. And then we've kind of aligned the different tensions that we calculated in parts A through D previously. And again, what we're simply doing is we're doubling those tension forces to get these answers. And so if we double the 466 newtons, then the correct answer to part E is going to be about 400, excuse me, 932 newtons. So that is the correct answer to part E. For part F, again, just doubling that original tension force from part B, we would get 1,054 newtons. And we just continue doubling our previous answers. So for part G, we're going to get the year in which I was born, 1862 newtons. And then finally, in part H, we have 2,110 newtons. So these are the correct answers to parts E through H. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But please, of course, do not feel obligated to do so.